so we can go ahead and get started and maybe yep. Kenny can join us. So, uh, so I'll give the usual uh, opening call to order. Welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission meeting. Uh, we, uh, I've got to change my screen just a little bit. Um, uh, so this public meeting on Monday, August 10th, 2020, based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020. This meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Jane Wald and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as, as normal. We'll take a roll call of commissioners in attendance. And as you hear your name called, uh, just answer affirmatively. Uh, and we'll begin with uh, Patricia Aw. Present. Robin Fordham. Present. Janet Marquardt. Present. Jane Scheffler. Not present. Hetty Startup. Okay, and no, 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 not there. Not there. Okay, and Jane Wald, I'm here. Um, so you can use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment, and I'll uh, call upon you then. Uh, and after speaking, just remember to remute yourself. Opportunity for public comment will be provided during the general public comment period toward the end of our agenda. Please be aware that the board will not respond to comments during the general public comment period. If guests wish to make a comment during that time, you must join the meeting via the Zoom teleconferencing links, which can be found on the town calendar listing for this meeting. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes and at the discretion of the commission chair. So with that, we can turn to our uh, agenda, um, beginning with announcements. Are there announcements? No, I don't have any. Okay. I don't, I don't have any. Uh, and moving right on to a discussion of the bylaw for preservation of historic structures. And um, so all of you received a, a draft that uh, Ben and Jane, and I think also Robin were working on. Um, and so there are several uh, changes to various sections that uh, that we've seen in draft before. So I think the way we'll go about this is to uh, just to take them one section at a time, uh, go through section by section. And um, those who've been working on the bylaw, I think it's unfortunately Ben can't be with us um, this evening and, and Jane is not with us yet, but um, maybe at the beginning of each section, um, Nate, you could give us a little overview of uh, of that section and of the proposed changes and then we can have uh, just discuss sure. the changes in general mm -hmm. so beginning with intent and purpose can oh, sit, yeah. um, I'm wondering if uh, since Rob is here uh, he, he's attending right Rob Morrow yeah. Yeah. I'm just wondering if you know the flow chart we were sent the PowerPoint whether he could explain why he made what what his how his differs from what we are proposing and why he thinks it's good before we go through this because they all after a while they all sort of look the same to me i mean there are there's such slight differences and i realize we have a lot more detail in our definitions and things but i was just wondering about his in particular and if he wanted to explain it since he's here Let's see, he may think, not Jane? have, um, Ben made these flow charts and um, I could always maybe try to speak to them. Is this, can everyone see that what I'm sharing now? Yeah, so Ben's not coming to the meeting. Right, but I think, so, um, I think the, 
I mean, I can speak to what we've talked about. Jane, Ben, and I also met, and Ben and I <laughs> talked about it. You know, right now, we, there's, there's not really a clear two-step process, and there's really not a clear administrative process for what goes to the commission or what staff could um, review. So, you know, it's, it's been, um, if you read the bylaw as it is uh, literally, it, almost anything should go to a public hearing, you know, removal of one piece of gutter. And so there's been some interpretation of that and some changes to the rules and regulations of the commission without say uh, being inconsistent with the bylaw, but some of these steps are not you know, clear. So someone has to read the application form, the bylaw and the rules and regulations to know exactly how the process works. And so, you know, talk at, with the workshop with Chris Skelly and then with the revision of the bylaw, you know, I think the hope is that there is a clear, clear, um, steps in the process. So first is like, what is the threshold to submit an application? What's the administrative review piece? And then if there is the right. two-step process- I'm just wondering you exactly where his, his differs from our proposal, because his comes right after our proposal, the one that says historical commission members, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. he must have been working from our proposal when he was coming up with his. And, it would just help as we went through our proposed changes if we knew what what he preferred and why. Since he's well, gonna... I'm not going to talk speak to Rob, but I do think that my suggestion is that we drop a definition of significant alteration and alteration altogether, and just have a definition for demolition and then exemptions. Because I think Rob was also working on a previous version, and I think the the nuances of all of a sudden we're having alterations or you know significant alterations to me becomes confusing so my recommendation would be to have just a good definition of demolition and so i think rob was basing it on a previous version and other versions that the commission had but you know he and i haven't discussed discussed it yet okay rob has a hand raised rob uh hi um yeah so the anything that has my name on it is actually something that was worked on quite a while ago okay. and that was uh my attempt to update what we currently have in the bylaw so it, it, it doesn't at all um you know respond to what the commission have been working on lately uh i uh you know i just actually gave it to ben just a couple of weeks ago so i think he was trying to summarize it but uh to what nate was talking a little bit about there you know one major uh, difference in in the draft that I was working on is that you know we continue using the, the the concept of demolition through this bylaw even in the draft that you're working on now uh, section 13.5 is about demolition the permit is a demolition permit uh, but where the structure starts to break apart a little bit is when you uh, create this significant alteration as something different than demolition and that's why I would suggest maybe when you when you get to your bylaw draft to look at keep that in mind and look at that because it doesn't flow well through the the structure of the bylaw being based on demolition. Right. Uh, so you know, for example, in my uh, original draft from a couple of years ago now, uh, significant alteration was part of the demolition definition. So you're trying to keep you know keep the the trigger being demolition, whatever demolition ends up to be, full removal of a structure or some percentage of a structure. Uh, but you know, using that, um, and really that was just to simplify and not have to change throughout the bylaw, uh, you know, different types of permits or different types of um, basically approval to proceed with work, not demolition to proceed. Uh, so that was that's one one major difference between the two. I think the two uh, drafts. So okay. Robin, uh, commissioners, I know that, so the definition section is the very next section after intent and purpose. And I hope, um, Rob, you'll, you'll help us out when we get to that section on definitions, uh, sure. because I know that, that this issue about um, the sort of co uh, contradictory tendencies of significant alteration and demolition is something that we'll want to sort out right there in the demo, in the uh, definitions to begin with and then we can see how it flows through the bylaw. So um, 
Uh, so we're going to get we're going to get to that as soon as we get past intent and purpose. And okay, sorry, but I, now I have a better sense. If I, I didn't realize he'd written that so long ago, I thought it yeah. was. Yeah, no, that's really helpful to to know that. And uh, and we're yeah, and it's true. We're looking at something different uh, tonight. So, um, Nate, do you want to sort of give us a little setting for the intent and purpose as it as it's expressed here? It's um, a little different from the last draft. <clears throat> right, I think, um, you know, one thing the town attorney will say that the intent and purpose of a bylaw is really important to help if there's either an appeal or questioning of the, of a decision. And so, you know, I think, not that it has to be so broad then that it captures everything, but, you know, I think it, this, this is important because it's up to the commission to decide um, you know, I think there are many purposes for historic preservation, but then uh, specifically for uh, preservation of structures that people want to demolish. So, you know, it, it bleeds into a little bit of the definitions in terms of what we're trying to do. But, you know, Ben added what's in the track changes. I mean, I think there's economic benefits, there's cultural benefits, and then, you know, some sustainability. Um, and we could make this a little bit more robust with either bullet points. It doesn't have to be in a prose form, but I think the idea is to say that it's more than just preserving historic character of a community. You know, there's economic benefits. There could be, um, you know, through cultural tourism, through, um, you know, architecture, you know, preservation of districts. And so I think the, the previous bylaw said a few of those things, but, you know, having a few of these key terms in there, I think could be really important. So I just, and I think it's up to the commission then to decide like is how what is the intent and purpose of a demolition bylaw is it is it so narrow that it's you know okay we're only going to preserve buildings but are there other benefits or reasons to have this and so i like the addition the encouraging sustainability addition i think what's important here too is the idea that there's a public purpose uh, and a public benefit to preserving something that's private. And I don't, I don't know whether the language of preferably pre preserved buildings was in there prior to these, but I think that was something we talked about with the seminar mm -hmm. of, of that using that term, um, that it had some impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think the current bylaw, um, this sentence, through this bylaw, owners of preferably, preferably preserved buildings are encouraged to seek out alternative options. I don't think that was in the intent and purpose, it is in the intent and purpose of the current bylaw, and it only, it only appears once you get all the way through the whole um, public hearing process and the outcomes. So. I, I like that it's here right up front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, um, let's see. We would have to change, you know, demolition permit is what we're, you know, if we're not, depending on what we're calling them, but. Well, we're not changing the name of the application, right? We're just changing the name of our bylaw, right? I think that's right, yeah. If that's, if, yeah, I mean, if that's what we want to call it. If, yeah, we're still applying it, for demolition, demolition, but we're just not calling this a demolition yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, this phrase to make that, uh, let's see making the town a more attractive and desirable place in which to live and work. Um, you, uh, you all recall what Chris Skelly said about historic preservation actually having an economic benefit. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if we should bump up that, sort of make that phrase a little bit more robust. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, besides sustainability, there's just also um, right. a, a number of, his, of economic advantages. One is the better materials they represent, the older buildings, um, bringing people to the town, 
businesses because of the historic buildings. There's a number of things. I don't know how we would express that succinctly. Yeah, I do think that would be a place, this would be a good place to add it though. I'm um, just making a note on the document as we speak. Um, might, we might refer to, oh, there you look like you were almost adding it there, Nate. Uh, cultural tourism? Yeah, I was gonna say cultural to tourism. Maybe just change that sentence that you read, Jane, to making the town a more economically attractive and desirable place, visually desirable place in which to live and work. Economically attractive and visually desirable or something like that. Rob, what do you think about that having some, some more language in the purpose? The purpose. You're muted. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's a good place to, to uh, fill that out a little bit there. Yeah, I don't have any answers right now, um, but we can work on that. Uh, yeah, we may not have, we may not generate perfect language, right? right now, but it, but it'll come. But right. If we can, if we jot down our ideas, we can refine them later. Right. Yeah, I I, I think that's important. The um. You know, I think, especially if someone reads this, if, an, if we can have an applicant read this, it'll help them understand too the why they're applying. Mm -hmm. Which right now, I think the idea is, uh, you know, I think some people don't understand historic preservation, so they question, you know, why, why, why even having this permit in place. So, I think this can get to that. Mm -hmm. So somehow there needs what follows public welfare, if we're still going to continue to use that term, right. needs to be expanded to include the economic, the traditional right. culture, and the visual characteristics. But I think we kind of cover, we, we, give, we give that prelude when we're talking about streetscapes, mm -hmm. protecting significant buildings, streetscapes, and neighborhoods. Um, this this just further defines what we mean by that, I think. Yeah, we can, I can work on some language with Ben to put that in there. Is there anything else we think we're missing if there's part of the purpose? I think, I think those are good additions. Um, right. We don't want to say too much in the preamble because it's just um, it's just an introduction. We, right. we can spell it out more later. All right. So move on to definitions, and um, so um, Rob has are already uh, framed this the point about alteration or significant alteration and demolition. And Nate, do you want to do you want to give us any more context or point to anything specific before we dive into this? Yeah, I think this is going to be a really important section. Uh, you know, Rob, when we had Chris Skelly on um, about a month ago, he was surprised. Um, I think two places in this is that we um, we define both a building and a structure, which you know, we're, you know, he, you know, and, and then it's so vague that we're not even actually defining anything. And then he thought uh, we didn't clearly define demolition. So, you know, I think those are two points that I think the commission could really discuss, you know, is, is the, you know, what does it, what is meant by demolition? Is it, you know, the knocking down of a building, the raising of a building, is it removal of some of it, of just trim and architectural features? I think, um, you know, Chris Skelly has said that if we really want to become a design review board, then it's a local historic district or different tools throughout town. If, you know, we're trying to regulate aesthetics so carefully, if it's, you know, so I, I think the, I think that's important. I think defining a building is important. And I think, you know, dropping the ideas of alteration and um, the definitions altogether and just having a clear definition for demolition and then exemptions. I. I think that would make it a lot easier to interpret. You're saying drop these definitions? 
I would say that we have to eliminate the definitions for alteration altogether. We don't define alteration at all. There's no such thing as an alteration or a significant alteration in this bylaw. It's either a demolition or it's not a demolition. And we have clear parameters for yeah. what is meant by demolition. And, and we then define. just our exemptions kind of define mm -hmm. that. Well, for instance, it, Chris Kelly said, you know, Mass Historic's template is a demolition is removal of a roof, removal of 25% of the exterior walls, or, you know, I don't know, whatever, well, there's another piece. So, you know, right now we're saying it's removal of any piece is what it says. So you, you take off your shutters, that's supposed to be a demolition. And well, then we, was, under demolitions, um, definition, could we say something like, um, could we add significant alteration in that definition, in demolition, as part of our defining? Well, I'm saying, not, I'm recommending not to. I think that's something for the commission to discuss. And then I think hand in hand is what's, what are we demolishing? What's the difference between a building and a structure? So right now, if someone takes down anything from, um, outdoor art or a fence to a barn to a house, that's all ca um, caught under this. And do we want a demolition bylaw to apply to everything that's vertical or is it really only, you know, um, houses? Is it barn, you know, is it barn? So how do we define what is a building or a structure? Um, you know, at the demolition definition that I'm looking at right now doesn't, doesn't speak to the nuance of alterations. I, I, I think if we could add the, uh, that demolition is, you know, includes significant alteration too, and then the definition of significant alteration. It, it, because I think we, we could be um, challenged if someone decides they're going to take down you know, something that signifies uh, by scroll work or whatever, that it's a Victorian building or colonial shutters or whatever, we could be challenged if we don't speak to the um, significant alteration as being included in the, as part of the definition of demolition then, if we don't do it separately. Well, I guess that's the question. Do we want to have a demolition bylaw review this. Chris Skelly would say no, that you know, demolition bylaw really doesn't, you know, someone removing trim, that's not really the place for a demolition bylaw. That's a local historic district or a preservation, a neighborhood preservation bylaw. You know, I think Mass Historic has changed to say that a demolition bylaw is really about demolishing or um, you know, uh, really demolishing a building, not removing pieces of it or the character of it so well i i kind of agree with that in terms of how it, making it easier for us to have strict mm -hmm. um, boundaries but i still think that the the definition of demolition leaves open the option for somebody to say well i didn't remove or raise 25 percent of my structure i just changed it I left windows, I just made them different. Or I left a roof on it, I just put a different look of a roof or something. And I think that's why if you could say any act of pulling down, destroying, removing, raising, or, alt or significantly altering 25% or more of a building would, would keep them from being able to say, I didn't actually remove it, I changed it. You see what I mean? Yeah, I think, I think I, Jen, I think we're kind of trying to get to the same point where the definition for demolition as it is now doesn't satisfy me because of the nuance that could be and whether we'd be challenged just as you described. Right, but we can take those two definitions for alteration and significant alteration out if we just put them as part of the 25% under demolition. Right, right. And, and that's what I was suggesting that you expand the demolition to, um, Describe the, right what well, we I mean by that. Just exactly what I had said. I, I mean, I think you're absolutely right. So if we put, but significantly altering it in this definition, would we need to define that 
Get no, my thought is we would. would. No, I don't think so. If we're saying altering 25% of a building, that's, that's pretty that, that's clear. That's pretty clear. And then we would, to me, then we would we would remove the definition definition of alteration anyways. Yes. Right. right. I, I think that could work. My only thought there, though, is, you know, people don't have to take out a building permit or any permit to do some of this stuff. So what's the mechanism to, to do this? <clears throat> I think most people don't know that they need to, you know, for instance, they're taking down a fence. They don't know that they need to pull a demolition permit. You know, they're, they're putting, um, you know, they're repainting their house. And while they're doing that, they're going to take down a lot of the decorative trim work because they don't want to paint it. There's no permit required for that. And so to me, it becomes a really difficult thing to enforce or to educate the owners about, um, you know, this 25% removal of architectural features. I and mean, that becomes, to me, almost more like a local historic district and not a demolition permit. Maybe we need to run an article once a year that says, remember, if you have a home 50 years or more older, you need to, you know, keep this in mind. And if you're going to do anything, you have to get a permit. I mean, it's, oh, uh, it, Nate, aren't you saying that they're actually not required to get a permit? Right. Right. Well, so, for, I mean, if someone is removing some decorative trim, there's no permit really required for that. Right. So they're not in violation of, of anything. If it's 25% or more. But that, yeah, if they, right, if it's 25% or more, they would be on this bylaw. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying if we just educate people. So, then, Robin, we, if you missed the conversation, Robin, we're saying, in the definition of demolition, fold in significant alteration. Right. No, I, I didn't miss it. I was listening. Yeah. I mean, it seems like the Historical Commission's position is leave that out and address it elsewhere, which seemed to be what you were suggesting, that we have, you know, that we have more than one way to achieve our goals and that the um, significant characteristics that don't necessarily fall under a demolition permit would be projected through a different mechanism. Is that what I'm understanding? Right, I think that's what Mass Historic recommends now. Right. So I think to me, the significant alteration right now, the act of changing, modifying, or removing important architectural elements becomes very difficult to enforce or define. So, you know, someone, right. you know, I, I just think that, you know, someone is putting, you know, they're redoing their front porch. Is that a demolition? I mean, this is what we struggle with now. You know, someone is, you know, tearing down their front porch and they're putting in a new front porch. Is that a demolition that we want to review? Someone is replacing their windows. You know, they're putting in replacement windows. Maybe they're removing the outside trim. Maybe not. Is that a demolition? And so, all of a sudden, if if um, if they would be considered a significant alteration, so all of a sudden that becomes a demolition. And to me, the staff and the commission is in the same place all over again, are reviewing a lot of applications. It's not really simplifying the process at all. I mean, it. We could write a bylaw so that the steps are, are simplified so an applicant understands how it'll be reviewed but in terms of what's being reviewed it's not simplifying it well but it's our purview i mean it may not be simpler but that's why we exist to keep things from being historic buildings from being ruined so to speak or you know too too updated so right. I think my question is just not so much that that's not our purview, but is there a different mechanism? Like we've talked about that there's a different mechanism for um, demolition by neglect, that the suggestion from the historical commission is that that, that should be a separate bylaw. Is this, is this something that we're trying to cram into a demolition bylaw that should be managed somewhere else? I mean, that's the question I'm asking Nate, essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I think so, because I think that try, if, if all of a sudden we're becoming a design review board where, you know, someone's changing out right. all the doors in their house and it's more than 20, you know, it's like, is that a significant alteration? I just, I feel like. Um, right, right. So I would say from the, I mean, I, then I would then argue from a historical commercial perspective that we focus on kind of the large chunk of demolition and then establish that without it getting too complicated and too muddied. And then if we feel like we need something for, you know, character alteration, we start to explore ways that that, that can be preserved and, and, you know, people can be educated or if there's any sort of bylaws that 
yeah, does that make sense? I mean, to go kind of from the large piece out and not get everything in here that we feel like we need to. I think that's, I mean, that's the discussion point, right? So what is, right. what is the, so what does the commission want to review? Do, does the commission want to continue reviewing changes to some of these things? So someone replaces all their windows, is that a demolition? And, you know, if it is, then, you know, what, what does that mean and how do you define it? Is removal of a porch demolition? Is removal of a front porch a demolition? Can I, ask, um, can I ask Rob, uh, Maura, um, can you see a way to, I mean, what, what would the impact be for you if, if we included in uh, the definition of demolition um, significant alteration or modification of 25% of that, 25% of the, I don't know, the, the volume or square footage or of, of, a, of a building. Yeah, so um, that's actually the way I proposed it. Um, you know, so the demolition definition to be the act of pulling down, destroying, raising uh, a structure or a change to a portion thereof that results in a significant alteration. And then you go on and define significant alteration to what you want it to be. So we know, you know, full removal we want is demolition. We know that 25% sounds like everyone's in that um, agreement that 25% is a reasonable number to start with. It's just how much further than that do you go in the definition of significant alteration? And that would be, you know, your decision to make. But I personally like that in the demolition definition because, again, it follows through this bylaw that we are ultimately getting to a demolition permit. And what is, what is demolition? The, the authorization to move ahead with whatever results after the review uh, uh, through this bylaw uh, is, going, is, is called demolition. Right, but I think, Rob, I guess one question would be, how, how would someone know that they're actually doing a significant alteration if they don't really have to pull permits to do some of that work? Well, that's where we get into, that's, you know, if it's 25%, you know, alteration of 25% of the building envelope, roof, windows, whatever, walls, um, it's likely going to be a building permittable item. Um, it, you know, in more cases than not, I mean, even removal of the siding is, is going to require a building permit. So that's likely going to capture it. If, you know, if you move further along into a definition like what's in the, the document on the screen, um, that's where we definitely get into areas where work could happen, uh, you know, without the permit because the, the contractor or person doing the work knows that a, a permit is not required. So there, there wouldn't be any reason to ask or come to the, the town to, uh, to learn that there's this process. Right. Um, but that's not really much different than what we deal with with the LHD and, you know, other things that are regulated that way that don't necessarily require permits. You know, we have, we have zoning bylaw, you know, whether it's a fence or a shed or, uh, you know, above ground swimming pools, things that don't require building permits. Uh, you know, it's the same thing, really. Um, we have that parking lot modifications don't require building permits necessarily. Uh, but we have these zoning requirements that are in play. And Rob, you, you listed all the things in the definition of significant alteration, you said the building's exterior envelope, including walls, roof structure, doors, windows, stoops, porches, and similar elements. Whereas we list them down in 13 point, what is it, 3 1 as exemptions. Um, do you think we would need them up in the definition or just leave them in exemptions? Well, I, I was going for a little bit more, um, I guess, um, direction to the person interpreting the bylaw, uh, you know, with the 25%, what does that really mean? Right. And I would suggest that 25% of something, the area of the exterior envelope of the walls, roof, at a minimum, you know, just to get, you know, and, and that might not be how it's worded, but giving the inspector or the applicant or architect something to start with, uh, because with the 25%, I mean, this is used in, this similar language is used in other communities and what it ends up with is some sort of a brochure that describes how the building department defines that or applies that. So if we can get that a little bit into the bylaw, at least it, um, it, it you know, it 
it's a measurable item if we're looking at the, the square footages of the envelope uh, systems. You're thinking of all sides? Because we've always said just visible from the street. I noticed that, yeah. I, I, I hadn't been thinking visible from the street, but I did notice that in your draft. I, I underlined it and I, you know, that's fine. Um, it's just, um, I would want that in the definition. Yeah, it's just a lot bigger amount if you're only looking at, say, the front and you say 25% than if you're looking at all the way around and you say 25%, right? Well, right. it's not necessarily right. just the front, right? It's whatever is from... Uh, right, well, just, you know... You. I mean, yeah, no, I'm just saying... That the it could be view. a lot more um, of what you're seeing if it's 25% of that rather than the whole thing. I don't know, maybe not. I do think well, that the, where it gets where it gets complicated is that the the resulting structure, say in addition, might be visible but from the street. A lot of it might be visible from the street. Might come up higher than the existing roof line. It might have an impact on the uh, the architectural value of the building, but the demolition isn't visible from the, the the public view. So is there a trigger there? You know, so that's just where it, you know we just got to be careful on. Yeah, how, how we need to decide whether we're going to look at what's going right. to be replacing right. the, what's demolished. But is, Rob, to your point, Rob, I do think... I'm so sorry. Think, yeah. But we Rob, have to qualify you, the 25, we have to qualify the 25%, right? So I think to Rob's point, like, how do you interpret that? Is it, you know, is it 25% of the exterior area? You know, that's one. Is it 25% of, of a unique feature? So that means if they're replacing, you know, removing or altering 25% of a feature. So, you know, that might be, do we have to define a feature? Is it 25%, mm -hmm. you know, because- Like of a cupola or something. Right, or, right, or, you know, they're doing, they're redoing their front porch. Is that part of the building envelope exterior? Is that the porch itself something? So to me, I, I mean, I know that the 25% is used. I just see right now, if we left it the way it is, 25% or more of a building, someone could say, well, you know what what if we what if it were 25 percent of any side I, uh, yeah i mean i, I don't I, yeah i'm not sure how to say it but right so i don't think we want to look at it then do we jane i mean if it's like the back you know how sometimes we've said that you know that addition or that porch back there we can't see it anyway what difference does it make i mean do we want to look at all those? Well, so when I think about a historic building, I really think about the entire building. Yeah. Um, and the integrity of that building. And if, and I'm not sure I would want it actually written into the bylaw that it is only what we see from the street. That, that, that's what the, I think that's what the local historic district commission guidelines do. Right. But for if we're talking about preserving significant buildings, significant examples of architecture, uh, I, I think I wouldn't limit it to just what's seen from the street. That's Though a good point. we could end up with a bunch of Potemkin facades. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and I think we. I agree with Jane looking at the whole building, but Rob, when he started out, uh, gave a, a kind of a synopsis definition that talked about demolition and or significant change to 25% of, and then some description. Um, I think we could, you know, I'm back to where I started. I think we could incorporate the significant um, uh, changes under demolition if if they're incorporated and defined that way but i and i also agree with with jane that that you know we start by looking at the whole building and it, we recently had a situation where there was a, a attached garage the age of which we couldn't determine and it didn't it, it wasn't significant architecturally in the way that the building the, the house was and so I think our discussion was, well, let's look at the whole building and then decide. And that's where I come from on these things. I think it's important. It's not just a streetscape. Streetscape is part of it. And we've, we've taken a look at, at issues based on streetscape. But I think those, those things all need to be included. I think, and, and, 
I think the okay. whole structure, that's a, the, right, the, the uh, Clearing Street one is a good example. I think it becomes relevant if the commission does the two-step process and then is looking at properly preserved. And part of the stuff you're looking at is what's the future plans for the property. Because if, if what's not visible from the public way is what's being proposed to be demolished, then it doesn't matter what it's what's being, what it's, you know, if there's something replacing it, because if it's not part of your review, the commission isn't looking at it. So, um, yeah, I thought when I saw the visible from the street, I don't know, if, right, if that's just pulling in the local historic district rules or, um, you know, if that's the way new bylaws do that. But I, I think, and then, I, so I, I would, yeah, I think we would just say it's based on the, the entire structure and, you know, then it becomes something that the commission or staff, if there's a two-step review, could determine whether or not, you know, when it, if it goes to a hearing, the commission could maybe walk through it pretty quickly, you know, to determine whether or not that could be demolished or not. So, um, but I think it'd be very hard to say that that's exempt or not part of the review, and then the commission wants to review what's going in its place or do something else. Um, and Hetty joined us. I she had her hand raised for a bit. Um, Hi, Hetty. Do you want to do you want to speak? Yes. Yeah, sorry. I I I just I was just trying to make an argument for the sort of streetscape idea of of sort of walking by something and maybe seeing two facades of a building. Um, whether there's any merit in trying to sort of consider that as an option. Um, that you know that's often how we see buildings as we walk by or drive by that we we get this sort of yes we get the front facade but we don't want to promote sort of facadism but what you what you get with streetscape is is often two sides you know a corner and often when you think about architectural photography you always want a, a shot of a significant structure that that shows that because it has more it gives you more information uh, I, I don't know quite where I'm going with this I'm just trying to sort of play with what really 25% is I have a really hard time with 25% because is it 25% of the front door or the first floor or the second floor or yeah um, we've talked about yeah. have you dealt with all of that I'm sorry to be late as I said before um, but it just you know it, it it sounds like it would be helpful to have a bit more detail in this bit. Yeah, so I think, you know what, yeah, I, I agree. I think if we're saying 25%, then I think we need to qualify it a bit more. I think that's the discussion the commission can have. So, you know, Chris Skelly's example was very clear of what he defined as demolition. And then everything else was just not in the review. So mm -hmm. who cares if someone's tearing down their porch? That's not part of demolition. And so I think the commission, you know, that's to me, that's a really important point is does the commission want to review those types of changes? If it does, then, you know, we figure out how we write a bylaw, whether it's significant alteration is folded into the definition of demolition. If we don't want, if the commission doesn't want to review those things, then we just leave it out, right? We leave those as exemptions or something. So, you know, the mass historic template was, you know, you remove a roof. So basically like you have to lift the roof off a building or you tear down 25% of the of a you know of the exterior envelope. So you take down a wall or more than one side of a build. You know, if it's four sides, you take down 25% or more of the exterior walls. Everything else seemed to be exempt from review. And the way that Rob wrote it, it's without replacement. So you could argue that you're not actually altering or removing sure. if you're replacing it. Well, right. So then it doesn't say that what you replace has to look the same. So let me, that's in, um, yeah. Um, so I think then, uh, right, we'd have to be pretty clear on how we define things or our wording. So if we said uh, pulling down or raising 25% of the envelope, meaning for a simple four-sided house, that would be, that could be one entire, uh, one entire side, one entire wall. 
um, and that seems, I mean, is that a low threshold or is that a high threshold? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's... Well, then, would we then fold in the definition of significant alteration? So then do we add is, you know, part A of demolition is 25% and then part B is the significant alteration piece. So, I mean, Rob, what do you think if we said 25% of a building's exterior envelope, how, how is that interpreted? Yeah, so that's gonna calculate the area of the roof and the walls. Uh, as a total cumulatively to to determine the the percentage unless you specify it differently right right to exclude the roof or something right and so what about if someone was if someone was say they had a front porch and they want to take it down unless uh, unless it's considered a significant alteration it wouldn't it may not reach the 25 percent threshold that's right that's why we still need to have the definition of significant alteration in there, even if we add that wording to demolition. Right? Yeah, I, I think that's right. Either, right. either that or 25% um, of any facade. And that could get complicated for more complicated kinds of buildings. I'm just thinking well, under your, um, your definition of a four-sided structure, if you have four side equal sides and a roof, they could say the roof was only 20%. You know what I mean? If they make that the fifth piece. Mm -hmm. So what would they, what would they, so, um, so you're saying what they could uh, demolish the roof, change the roof from say, you know, cave to a gambrel and that would not qualify. Right, if they left all the other four sides the same, they could say that was only 20% of the exterior envelope. Especially if it's like a 1940s house with a flat roof and they decide they're gonna put cables on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that, and, but, but if we had a significant alteration definition, which says that, you know, the modification or, or removal of significant historic design elements isn't allowed, then that gets, that catches it, right? Right, that's why it has to be either separate as it is or part B of, a, of the demolition definition. Yeah, I would take out the alteration definition put in significant alter altering in the demolition definition and leave significant alteration as a separate definition. Or would we just call it demolition and so that every time, you know, throughout the bylaw, it would just say demolition. So that way there's no confusion. Oh, I'm doing a significant alteration. No, you're actually doing a demolition. Right. So you just fold it all into demolition. Right. Part A, part B. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I think Everyone's kind of saying 25% uh, of a building's, okay, we're gonna say building, but then we define building or structure, but I'm gonna say a building's exterior envelope. And for now, I'm gonna say parenthetically, including roof, and that's part A, and B is significant alteration, which we fold into the definition. This is all under demolition. Yes. Yeah. So why don't we under building, why don't we say anything about the exterior envelope? Because we just want to talk about the three-dimensional form itself. I mean, well, let's just, for a significant alteration, we're saying, I just want to get to uh, what, okay, sorry. Do, do we like the act of changing, modifying, removing? Um, is it, are we saying 25% again? Or what are we saying is significant alteration? No, I think we should leave it the way we have it important architectural elements from a structure, or maybe it should say from a building? From a building, yeah. Yeah, well, it, yeah. elements define the historic integrity of the design, except for the exemptions. Can we, I think we could start with that. Okay. I think, I, I you know, I, I think the combination, you know, uh, expanding the demo, the definition of demolition and keeping it all together is much better than having two separate mm -hmm. definitions. Yep. Plus no, no. the exemptions, that makes it 
that makes it fit together nicely. It does. Yeah. And I think the next question then is, we have a building definition. It says, I mean, it's just really anything. Um, and then we have a definition for. Um, Except we're taking out structure. Uh, well, on wheels. And then we say eligible building. And then we have the definition of significant structure and then structure. So to me, it's really inconsistent again. So yeah. I think we either just say, we call it a building for the purposes of um, this bylaw and we define what that means for this bylaw or we call it a structure and then we just say structure because, right, right Rob, I mean, I think the building code has different definite, right? I mean, a building, it, I mean, we're not, we're not bound. If we say a building here and a building commissioner or inspector looks at it, they're gonna go by building code, right? Well, they're going to go by building code only if there isn't a definition here. Here, so the, right. So we can define define it differently. Um, mm -hmm. So obviously, having them, you you, if you ended up with just building, then that obviously doesn't capture things like fences or walls or things that might you know be different than a building. That's a structure. Um, you could use structure and capture it all. Yeah, you know, building could be a structure. I think that's uh, that's yeah. I mean, right now the definition of structure is any combination of materials constructed to make an object or building located in the built environment, which requires a permanent location on the ground. And so that just becomes, you know. That could be anything. Anything. The, um, the demolition delay uh, guide from the Historic Commission says, a typical definition is any combination of materials forming a shelter for persons, animals, or property. That's what we have for building. Yeah. Right. We already have that, but that oh, okay. is okay. So now you're much too vague. I like the one for structure better. Well, one refers to one refers to it's sort of the human embodiment right. of architecture, and the other one refers to something more neutral and to do with function. Um, I mean, I th I think it's it's kind of interesting just to see these two things, and maybe there's a reason for that. Well, I think Chris Kelly was concerned or shocked that we define both because it can mean anything. And so he was, during the workshop, he was kind of saying only at Amherst has he ever seen a town define a building and a structure separately that could mean anything. So I think, again, kind of like the definitions, I mean, does the commission want to review the removal of fences? Does the commission want to, re re you know, review the removal of walls of maybe statuary? And, you know, or is it really just the taking down of, you know, of buildings as, you know, what would be typical barns, carriage houses, sheds, and houses? Uh, well, I think and when I spoke to him previously, he, and I said in the guide, it says, um, you know, to util utilize other tools. Um, he said that for thing for specific things, I would think, especially in a town the size of Amherst, um, for example, the fence at the um, Salem Place property that a mm -hmm. single, that a proactive single um, building historic district is a, is a, they view that as a better tool for the protection of things like landscapes and things like fences that don't fall under the, the definition of building. I wonder how practical it is to to try to use structure to capture fences and walls. Um, you know, who, you know who, who's gonna know to, if it's not part of some larger project, who's gonna know to um, apply for a demolition permit? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it does start to be splitting hairs and maybe, maybe making us a little too powerful. <laughs> In a way, you know. I guess my thought would be not that we could inventory everything, um, the properties, but you know, there are a, probably a handful of um, fences or you know, ele, you know, kind of secondary or tertiary structures that would want to be reviewed um, on a property, right? I mean, there could be other things that aren't, aren't a building that the commission would want to review. Um, so my thought would be though, if we did say that. You know, for instance, like, so say we did say a structure, I mean, how many fences are over 50 years old? So if we're clearly saying it has to be at least 50 years old, 
it doesn't really matter then if they're removing a fence if it's not 50 years old. So is it okay for now to have a structure or some definition because, you know, maybe the future, a future commission would have to refine that, you know, so it, are there, I don't know, fences or walls that are less than 50 years that the commission really wants to see or over 50 years that the commission wants to see preserved. And if so, then we, we have a, we have maybe a more encompassing definition. I, you know, I, I, you know, right. I mean, how many are there, are there out there that the commission would want to see? Um, so right now we have definition for building. We have a definition for built environment. Yes. Um, we have a definition for structure. And significant uh, structure, which and significant eligible structure. building. Yeah. Eligible and building and significant structure are in contradiction too. Yeah, an eligible building, yeah. right. You know, so somehow, I don't know that we need those separate definitions if we could, you know, one, one says human made, another is, is the structure one is really broad. Mm -hmm. um, but do we need, do we need that many definitions? Can we not combine it into one that it's? I, I think we could combine it into one and drop all that, right? And, and include what's important of each one of them. Yeah, I mean, I think the eligible one is interesting. To me, we would have that be part of the process and say, here's what, yeah. here's what would be the trigger for an application. You know, Chris Kelly already said, don't use a National Register nomination because you know, that's taking something that's honorary and you're tying it to a regulation. So they, they advise against that because it's not, the intention of some of that is more educational and not you know, regulatory. So the idea of having a National Register District isn't to say any structure in a National Register District now has to go to a demolition application mm -hmm. or demolition hearing. Right. And it, so it would be picked up by the 50 years. Year. Yeah. So maybe anyway, we, anyway, so where do we, but we need to get 50 years kind of up front in the bylaw. So well, so maybe eligible buildings should take out numbers one and two and do 50 years and then take the line from significant structure a building found by the Amherst Historical Commission to contribute to the historical or architectural heritage or resources of the town pursuant to section 13.5. Well, so I, I think wouldn't we just delete eligible building altogether? Well, it's in, we have to keep it if we're going to use it. We have to define it, right? And it's, it comes up right away. Well, I don't think we would. I think we would just say, um, For a significant structure or for a building? To me, this becomes well, right. down here. The procedure seems really strange. Then, no demolition permit will be issued. You know, um, to me, it would, why wouldn't we just have a clear definition of a building or structure, as Pat said, and then just say if anything is over fifty, if if a, whatever it is, a building is over fifty years old or older, you apply for a demolition application, and that way, there's no if ands or buts and you know, it's just very clear. That's true. It becomes circular. Right, so right, right there in the procedure, uh, no demolition permit for a building over 50 years old shall be issued without following provision. Yeah, that's good. And take yeah. out the misspelled eligible building. So it would be building or structure because if we're going down to the definition. So we're going to take out the structure, I think, and, and add that into building. All right, so let's go back then to the definition. So right, I'd like to clean up the definition of building or structure, whatever we're calling it. Yeah. And so, um, you know, my thought is in the definitions, we delete eligible building now because it's just, yes, it's not necessary. Right. Yes, and delete structure unless you want to do fences. All right. I think practically speaking, I don't, I doubt there is a wooden fence that is actually more than 50 years old. There might be stone and, and yeah. iron and, ones. And so. metal iron ones, right? Yeah. I mean, stone, though, if it's on a scenic road, it becomes a um, part of the scenic road bylaw, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, there's a number of scenic roads in town. Um, could, you, could you modify building to say something about any combination of materials forming a shelter for persons, animals, or property, and its surrounding... 
<laughs> what would it be? And whatever surrounds it or whatever marks off the property, whatever. I mean, could you just add something there that allows for structure? What do we say in structure? Well, there's something to be said for the combination of what's in built environment with building. And then, then some wording from structure to include, include fences. And Any other combination of materials forming a shelter for persons, animals, or property, and the surrounding built environment, and its surrounding built environment. That works. But we need to, uh, uh, then would we leave the definition of built environment in? I mean, are we? No, come on. People can figure this out. Let's see. Homemade structures, buildings, and infrastructure found within the space people live and work. Oh, come on. But we have that in there, which is... I know. I would take out built environment, too. I mean, yeah, people can figure that out. Look it up, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I think for administering it, uh, it might be better to have a such as in there. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. So building... We're saying any combination of materials forming a shelter for persons, animals, or property and its surrounding built environment, such as uh, halls, boom. gates, fences, something like that. Yeah. Well, fences, gates, and um. Rob, what do you think about something like that as the definition for building? And that would be the only definition that runs in this bylaw. So, you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't call it a significant structure, right? We'd say a significant building. I mean, we would have to then tailor it all to mm -hmm. this. But um, I, it seems like you're going to capture a lot more than you want to. Uh, uh, even if you know how so. Well, so I mean, anything that is um, in the surrounding built environment that's fifty years or older would be uh, would would trigger the review. So, like a chicken coop, you mean that kind of thing? Yeah, uh, I mean a sign. A sign. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, I I kind of like the. I thought maybe Nate, you were going in the direction of um, you know in three thirteen point three. Um, you know, demolition permit shall be issued for a building or a significant structure and then inventory those significant structures. Well, that's one way to go about it, but we'd have to then inventory the whole town. Is that doable? No. <laughs> so what if we go back and, and add the 50 years in what we just did and take out gates, fences, et cetera, because we talk about a built environment. Well, I think what we do down below is we've already defined a building. So in process, we'd say, you know, no demolition permit for a building um, 50 years or, or older. So, you know, it'd be, you just refer back to the definition of building. Under 13.3, you don't need it because the next sentence says, if a building is of a known age, we assume the building is over 50 years old. I mean, but we would just, I mean, we would just delete this all together and write a new. Well, I mean, Jane simplified it nicely. No demolition permit shall be issued without the following provisions of this bylaw. And then we go on and do the provisions. But we're, we're taking out the 50 years of the, the building definition above because we took out eligible building. That's, that's correct. And I was suggesting putting 50 years into the first sentence under 13.3. Okay, so oh, yeah. say, say that again, okay. no demolition permit for a building. We just delete for it. a building. Oh, I thought you had years. Said, yeah. Okay, 50 years or older. Shall be issued without. Oh, okay, I didn't hear that, sorry. Okay. Now well, we then let's just leave building the way it was without the surrounding built environment and see what happens. If I mean, I suppose we could always go back later and modify things. Right, so I mean, so this would be a lot easier then. So we're going to um, delete this, and we just this would be um, here. We're going to delete this. We're going to delete eligible building. Yeah. 
we're going to delete um, structure. And then we would call this a significant building. I mean, if we're, because that's what we're, that's what we find. I have a quick question. Is it helpful or unhelpful to maybe relate the building to the property boundaries? Is, does that pick up some of the kind of concerns we have about walls and fences and chicken coops and uh, statuary, landscape features, wonderful trees, um, you know. But we're not, I mean, right now the commission doesn't review trees, but I think right here, the building, the definition of a building is any combination of materials forming a shelter for persons, animals, or property. Okay. Is that, is that? But if we, if we just added in the built environment without adding the such as. Well, Rob was saying though, the built environment would mean anything, signs, chicken coops. So that's complicating for us. It, right. It's too broad. Yeah. I, I think, okay. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the definition, this short, succinct definition of building. Uh, Why do we need to have a de definition for significant building? Aren't we going to say properly preserved is giving the significance? The, um, so right now under this definition of building though, right, um, you know, a, um, a fence, a sign, uh, uh, wouldn't be, wouldn't be, they wouldn't need a permit, but right. a chicken coop or a barn, maybe. Would, yes. And yes. Like, what, about a corn animals? what about a corn crib or uh, yeah. a grain house? I don't know, a blacksmith shop. I mean, I'm just, you know, are we? Yeah. I mean. Yeah, a lot of things that people use as sheds used to be historic things like ice houses and things right. like that. And right. I was thinking like, you're right, there's been the one in Cushman, it was possibly an old blacksmith shop. Uh, you know, is that, that, you know, is that, is, so someone has like, you know, 10 by 12 building on their property. Is that really for the shelter of a person, animal or, pro you know, what is that? Well, property, yeah. For property, property, I guess. A shed yeah. could be for property. Rob, what were you going to say? No, I was just saying it seems to me that it would be. It would yeah. be, yeah. yeah. All right, so we... So why do we need significant building? Aren't we going to move that into... Oh, I thought we were going to put it somewhere else. But maybe oh, cool. oh, yeah, here's... We'll, we'll move this to... Um, I have that the alteration into the definitions. Um, Part B of demolition. And, yep. And then yeah, the significant, bu yeah. significant building. I guess the question is, you know, if there's a two-step process, you know, the idea is someone submits an applicant, uh, you know, is an application submitted, and then there's a, a finding that it's a significant building as an administrative step. So this is a really, that's a really big, this is a really big change, right? So that's what yeah, Chris that's I was saying. Yeah, we moved significant alteration into demolition, but significant building is a different kettle right. of fish. Right. Yeah. So then, you know, I guess, you know, Rob, I think, I, th I'm, I think you're aware of this, but I, it's something we, you know, so, you know, the way the bylaw would work now is that, you know, it defines whether it's staff and or a representative from the commission would determine that building significance. And then the commission is determining whether or not it needs to be preferably preserved. And so, you know, that's a big change because most of the commission's work right now at a hearing is to determine if it's significant. And so I just want to make sure that everyone, you know, that that's, everyone understands that, that that's a, you know, a really big change from what we do. Yeah, right. And so, yes, the, those, both of those steps need to be represented, one by significant building and the other by preferably preserved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if we go so back to preferably preserves, it's to say significant building. Preferably, yeah. I just want to go back to the top of definitions just to see. Oh, we're deleting alteration altogether too, right? Yes. Uh, applicant, application, building, building commissioner, business day, I guess if that's, if we use that in the bylaw, commission, demolition, demolition delay, okay. So we're just saying a three, six, you know, a year long delay. We're, you know, we're not. Well, we still need to talk about the possibility of 18 months. I think that's too long without having any more incentive for an owner. Yeah. 
Um, but so, uh, um, you know, Chris Kelly said there's no reason why we have to tie this to 40A process. And if we move this out of the demolition mm -hmm. or the zoning bylaw, then, you know, some of these things become important, like a business day. So we define our own notification process or, or things. So, all right, so let's see, demolition, we're, we'll just for now, demolition delay, a demolition permit, um, demolition by neglect. And that's, you know, it, I guess we'd have that in there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we're not, this bylaw wouldn't, it wouldn't regulate it though. Right. Right. Emergency demolition. We need to define it. I think that yep. makes sense. A hearing permit. Um, why do we need a permit? Um, we, we define demolition permit above. Yeah, that's crazy. Everybody knows what a permit is. I would take that out. We've got demolition permit. Right. Preferably preserved. And you're saying a significant building. Yeah, and capitalized building. Building, yeah. One of the terms. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a second use of the word structure in there also. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then we define significant alteration, which is moved. I'll just. We're going to move that under demolition, like part B. Yeah. yeah. And then we define significant building. And we need to change the word structure in that definition. Also. <laughs> I think I think that word structure shows up in the, in the bylaw. Everywhere. We just need to do a speak and change. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Rob, my thought is if we move this to the general bylaw, uh, the, you know, I've always thought that one of the reasons to do that is then the action of the commission is results in a, a permit as now under zoning, it really doesn't, right? I mean, there's nothing that is done after the demolition, right? It's just, it sits until you issue something. But are we, I guess the question is the way this actually were to now, there's no, the only thing that's still issued is a demolition, uh, a permit to demolish. But is that different than what's happening now? So, um, um yeah. Well, right, right now, a permit to demolish is what a building permit to demolish is what's issued if the applicant follows through with right. the process. And if in this new bylaw, it would be the same thing that's issued. It is as long as you're. I, I mean, you've pulled back the scope quite a bit just during this discussion to be those that bigger type of activity. So as long as it remains something that would require a building permit, then that would be the same. So under demolition permit, we should take out the word structure and just say for the demolition of a building, period. Mm -hmm. Right? Because structure is getting into the walls and coops again. And buildings that define term. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and demolition is a defined term for, for this purpose. Right. Maybe demolition should be capitalized there because it is a defined term. I, I think so, just to make it clear that it has to refer back to right. the, yep. the internal definition. And then, all right, yeah. And under demolition delay, the 365 capital D delay should say a 365 demolition delay right. by the commission, right? Mm -hmm. Of a building, yeah, yeah. Take out structure. Of the building or structure, so structure comes out of there too. Yeah. Boy, we just need to do a find, yeah, find, yeah. find and replace. Yeah, I think we'll, find we'll and eliminate. Up, <laughs> yeah, we get a new a new draft, and then um, at the end of demolition delay, there's another structure to take out. I think I, had, I think I just did that. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm working on it at the same time. I just keep finding them. Okay. Do we need a definition for streetscape? Since it's... Well, I think, so I was, I, yeah, I was, I was saying that, for instance, if we took this out of the zoning bylaw and put it in the general bylaw, um, 
you know, maybe, right, we, I think we still, maybe we would want to define an appeal process or other things if it's not in here, right? Uh, we could define, I mean, we could define it. Uh, Aren't we only defining the things that apply specifically to the, our process for determining whether or not it can occur or whether it's an exemption, because something like street, streetscape is just a descriptive term in the intent and purpose, right, Jane, or is it coming up somewhere else? No, yeah, I think it's in the intent and purpose, but if we are now, if we're now applying demolition only to buildings, should we take streetscapes and neighborhoods? Well, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what to say about that. Oh, no. I see. We're saying preserving and protecting. Yeah. Yeah. Buildings within streetscapes, known streetscapes and neighborhoods or something like that, rather than making them separate elements. That, right, right. Because if we make them separate elements, it seems like we have to follow through and the rest right. of the By preserving and protecting significant buildings, which are part of Amherst streetscapes and neighborhoods. Significant buildings, which are part of? Yeah, so that they're not separate, something like that. Does that make sense? I yeah, think, I mean, I think. That's it clear, yeah. yeah. We'll just, okay, we'll leave it like that for now. It, it may come up when, um, you know, I was surprised when Chris Skelly said that if staff administratively or there's an administrative step to determine significance and then the commission determines properly preserved but there's no criteria for that i think that's yeah. to me I, I find that to be a little strange so i would think in this bylaw if we have um, parameters for a public hearing to determine preferably preserved the commission could list things like you know the uh, impact to street the streetscape you know the, or you know the um the, you know the impact to the historical surroundings or the context and so maybe have a few parameters which i don't know if they then become defined terms but we can you know circle back if mm -hmm. if we need to okay. all right so here's the commission appointments and powers i just you know i think i just deleted structures or sites what it used to say i think this has it I think the big difference would be these procedures here if we think we can um i just want to you know I, I, are we advising the building commission i thought we had we were advising the planning commission no the building the building, building commissioner issues the permit okay so if we have no our stuff doesn't go to the planning commission oh, that's interesting i mean i mean design review board does why don't we hard to advise well it says to advise the building commission with respect to the issuance of de demolition permits. So mm. the commission can still advise the planning board on matters or other things. Do we? Uh, oh, but it's not specifically about the demolition bylaw. Right. Mm. Preservation. Uh, should we go on to procedures? As I said, it's 7.20. There's a few other things on the agenda, but maybe we spend a little bit of time with this 13.3 and then we can. Yeah, let's do a little canvas for a time check. Um, sometimes our meetings have gone as long as two hours, which would take us to eight o'clock. Is that too, is too late? Sometimes they've gone as long as three and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not doing that tonight. Um, so are, uh, Pat, are you willing to go to eight or is that too long? No, no, I'm willing to go to eight, um, but I, I agree with Nate that maybe we finish this part of it after this section, because then we have to look at other agenda items as well. Yeah, we have the 132 Northampton Road. I just pulled up the agenda, um, you know, comments on the cell tower. You know, I had a, received a few, but we could just discuss those. And then there's a few updates. And then there's this demolition application. What about if we did those and then came back and spent as long as we had on this? Oh, yeah, we could do that. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Robin and Hetty, are you okay for eight o'clock or is that too long? 
Eight o'clock is good for me. Okay. If I'm here till eight, I can stay till nine, so we might as well just keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta let my chickens out. They're not gonna put up. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, so um, 132 Northampton Road, comprehensive permit. Uh, yeah, so the, you know there is an existing structure there, and the ICDC presented this in November, or December, and they, they see Rob. The idea now is to you know they want to demolish the entire structure on the property to put a new building in, and so. Um, as a comprehensive permit, they don't have to come to the commission uh, for the demolition permit. It can all be done through the Zoning Board of Appeals. And so the ZBA, you know, um, will probably meet for another month or two on this, but they look to the commission for a recommendation on whether or not the structure should be demolished or preserved. And so... We came, they came to us in November, right? And we basically said, it looks fine, keep going. We probably would approve it. Right. So can we just stay with that or do we need to rehash the whole thing? No, I mean, if the, I mean, I think for now, though, just because it's actually a formal application to the ZBA, I mean, if there was a motion that the commission, you know, reviewed this, you know, or, or was shown the plans and thought that the dem demolition was, you know, was permissible or something. I mean, it's just, you know, it could be as simple as that. Does everybody remember that meeting? I do. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. If someone want to make a motion? Yeah, I was going to say, if, there's, if there wasn't a motion, I think the ZBA would, you know, ev eventually they would ask the commission or they might delay the process because they would want to wait to hear from you. How do you want it to read? You know, I can move that um, really simply. Yeah, that's fine. I think it could okay. be pretty simple. We, um, we approve the comprehensive permit that includes demolition of the existing structure. So, or commission, um, I don't want to say approve comment as a permit that the commission um, approves the demolition request of the structure or is something just specific to the demolition. Dan, are you frozen? I think Dan might be frozen. Uh, okay. Uh, so I don't know if I can make a motion as chair, but um, uh, if somebody wants to move that um, the Amherst Historical Commission um, approves the demolition request for 130 for the for the structure at 132 Northampton Road. Right. Yeah, I, 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 just, I just modified Jan's motion to say that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then I I'll, I'll be glad to second that. Okay. Uh, um, Jan is left though, so maybe just give her. Maybe in a minute she'll rejoin us. Yeah, she probably just lost her, lost her connection. But we need to. Uh, I can ask if there's any discussion. Yeah. No. Nope. Can we, we technically there's no quorum right yes we can't can vote we put that can we put that on pause and go to other things on the agenda we could uh, come back to cell, it. yeah the cell tower yeah does anyone have comments on the cell tower at that intersection route 116 in west Pomeroy? It's a pretty developed corner in, in an odd way, <laughs> in my, my opinion. It's got some residential mixed use office buildings. It's got a strip mall and then it has a, a big farm behind it that I think is actually um, a company that does landscaping and other work. And so it doesn't seem to be particularly uh, a, a corner, if it's set back, that would be um, intruded upon, my opinion, intruded upon by a cell tower. Yeah, I think uh, Jan had driven by and did say that there, you know, there is a 
the Taylor Davis property, which is an older farmhouse, and then across the street there's an older farmhouse. Um, and so, you know, I, my thought would be the cell tower is in the middle of the property. They could try to push it north a little bit uh, just to get it away from Pomer West Pomeroy. And so, you know, it's just a shift north towards the Amherst Office Park. Um, you know, that would be the only, you know, if they wanted to have it on the property, that would be a suggestion we can make, you know, as opposed to having it, you know, for instance, what if when they go to do it, they decide they want to bring it all the way south and have the tower right on Pomeroy, on West Pomeroy. Um, yeah, that would be intrusive. Yeah. That would be intrusive, but I, I was going up, we talked about it being pushed further north yep. to a corner of a property the last time. So that's that's the sure. basis on which I'm making my comments. Yep. Mm -hmm. no, okay, that's good. Then I'll just, we can make sure that that's uh, transmitted. Uh, Robin or Hetty, do you have comments on I don't really know this, this um, particular project very well. I, I'm not familiar with the building that is there currently. I've just picked up on some of the things that are happening now with it programmatically, but I don't really have anything to add, Jane. No comment to add. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think I think our message has been formed. <laughs> uh, see, Jan hasn't emailed me and she hasn't Let me see if I can just email her quickly. All right. Oh. And what else did we have? The the Civil War tablets, I, I can just give an update on that. There was going to be a site visit to Ruxton, which is the building in North Amherst by Puffer's Pond where they're stored. And they're, they're all leaning against the back wall with, um, you know, on top, you know, each crate is stacked on top of each other. And it's really difficult to see them. Uh, the backside is what's facing out. Um, and the conservators recommended moving the tablets to a climate controlled place. And so uh, we have a new director of facilities and he and Ben have been looking at different town buildings. And so uh, the hope actually is that maybe within the next month, uh, by the end of the month, that the tablets may be moved, um, possibly to the bank center, possibly to a school building, but move somewhere where they're in, um, you know, in a controlled climate and then they could be more easily viewed. So. I think if, if they're not, we could schedule a site visit to Ruxin, but the push has been in the last two weeks to actually find a new location to store them. And, you know, we've let Anika know that, but I think that, you know, to me, that would be a really good thing to get them, you know, in a, in a better location. Sounds great. Sounds really good. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was joking around that there's, you know, parts of this, you know, we have South Amherst campus, which is, you know, an older school building. I was like, well, what if we just put them in a classroom and then, you know, we can make them visible, but, you know, the town may not want to, the idea is we want to move them once and let them be able to stay there for a few years until a project comes along where they can be displayed. So we're trying to figure out what's a good place where they can stay safely. Sounds good. Um, Update on West Cemetery signs? No, you know, um, there's been a little, there's, the artist was interested and there's been a few for, few tries to reach uh, the developer and that there hasn't been any, um, any, uh, any correspondence. But I, I just want to keep it on there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here, I'm texting Jan. I, I'd emailed her and I haven't heard, but okay. if her internet's down, then. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. okay um, Campus Pond. This is, I mean, I thought this was sort of more informational for us. Um, do we need to 
respond at all. I, you know, there, you know, there's been, you know, the UMass would like to, I don't, I'm not, not sure they want to make it more historic, but you know, they'd like to clean the pond in a way and clean the edge and possibly dredge. And so, you know, because of that, it triggers some permitting. I think there's, you know, there's a, a you know, the commission has the ability to provide comments if, if we want it. I don't, we don't necessarily have to do it tonight, but I think it's, it is an ongoing project that, you know, they're hoping to, to work through. I, I still think they're, I think they're still trying to do it. Um, the materials you sent us, Nate, indicated that they were um, going to do the dredging and everything, but they were going to leave the pond and replace any uh, plantings and landscaping that was destroyed in the process so that it would look the same as intended when it was, was developed. Is that correct understanding? Yeah, I mean, previously they had already done some new plantings around the pond, and I guess what's, what what it seemed a little different here was at one point they were trying to almost recreate the historic landscape of what the pond looked like in terms of plantings, and it's not clear that that's what they're doing. You know, it seems like if they dredge, they will replace what what was there, but um, you know, the, when the UMass inventory the their campus a few years ago now, the pond is an area that was identified as you know as a you know it was it was uh, inventoried, and so I you know I guess it's just a question of like what what's the intent of the replacement? You know, so there are some older trees and landscape there. Like, would they are they trying to recreate the historic landscape or just replace what is there currently? Because there was a plan or an idea to. So I don't, I mean, I think that's, to me, that was, that's the question of the project. Um, that, that's the question that has yet to be answered. Is that what you mean? Yeah, to yeah, me, for yeah. me, I'm not sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. Um, hmm. So should we come back to that? We could. At, a next, at another meeting and and, you know, Ben has reached out to the consultant. Yeah. Just frame a letter that asking them what their intent is. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's a good idea. Ben had reached out to the, the consultants. I'm not sure if we heard back, but I think that's a question we could pose to them in an email before the next meeting. Oh, fine. Yeah. Okay. You know, what is it replace what's there or make it more of the historic landscape and then see how they respond, how they answer that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just an email. That, that, that's very nice. That's easy. <laughs> yeah. Not everything has to be so formal. <laughs> oh, uh, Jan says she has no phone or internet, and oh. she she might try to call in on cell phone. But, yeah. All right. Okay. And then there's the as we're looking at the agenda. There's you know 348 Northampton Road submitted an application, and the. You know, this is already um, the, the owner. I think I think they own the property. Has submitted. You know, got, has gone through the ZBA to put a mixed-use building on the property, and so they may not have known they needed to. I'm surprised they're applying for a demolition permit at this time. But um, so I'm trying to pull. Yeah, it's on this. Yeah. You know, on the corner of Route Nine and University Drive South, there's a brick, a brick building, a cape. That's probably a better picture. It's not a very, very good picture. Oh, I can. Um, hmm. Hey, Jan, can you? I can't allow to talk. Okay, let me just do that. Jan, is that you? Let me, let me unmute you. Yeah, I got it. it I, I didn't have a personal ID, so I had to find out what the combination of, of keys oh. was, but I'm on. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. The best I can do is my cell phone. Sorry, I have no internet or phone. I tried emailing you and then realized if you didn't have internet, well. <laughs> right, but Jane got me um, through texting on cell, so this is what I can do for the moment. And I've pulled up all the materials that you're showing, so I should be okay. Great. So we were looking at Northampton Road right now, the 348. You know, okay. I was saying that they've already 
gone through the ZBA to put a mixed use building here, you know, with the idea of demolishing the building. And so, you know, they're coming in after the fact asking for a demolition permit. In, you know, does the commission want to have a hearing or does, you know, would this require a hearing? So there's, the, you know, the main structure and some outbuildings, which I'm not sure there are any pictures of the outbuildings. They're in pretty rough shape. Um, here's the no, property from above. Um, there's a barn tucked back in there. It's, it's all pretty, it's pretty wet through here. So it's not, and it's pretty overgrown. So this isn't, I don't think that building is visible at all from the street. Well, I think it's a pretty undistinguished building. I've always found sitting at that signal that it was rather an eyesore. I mean, maybe that's just the way the property's kept up, but it, yeah, it isn't like some great mid-modern mm -hmm. design or anything. No, I think it's been a rental property for a lot of years and it's somehow mm. looks neglected. The, the whole the house and the surrounding properties have always been neglected to me. Mm -hmm. Do we need a, uh, is this just a consensus or do we need a motion to um, hold, hold a hearing or not hold a hearing? I think it'd probably be to, to not hold the hearing, right? So then that just allows it to proceed. The last time I tried to make a motion, everything crashed and burned, so maybe somebody else should. I so move. Thank you, Robin. Is there a second? I, I second. Second. Thank you, Hetty. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Am I on video here? <laughs> and opposed? Abstain. Okay. We've disposed of that agenda item. Um, so Jan, we uh, decided to uh, put, a, put a pause on the motion you made so that you could come back and vote because- Oh, okay. Did you get my motion? We, I, I modified it a, a bit possibly. I said move that the commission approve of the demolition request for the building at 132 Northampton Road. Great, because I was in the middle of asking Jane if that's what it should say. So whatever, that's great. Mm -hmm. And Pat, you had okay. seconded. Uh, I had seconded it, yes. Okay, great. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, motion carries. All right. And we, Jan, while you were gone, we just, we mentioned that the cell tower um, you know, we'll recommend keeping, trying to move it north on the property, not bringing it south to the road. Um, that's about all that there was to say about, you know, that. Um, south to Pomeroy, you no, mean? Keeping it, trying to move it north, you know, and not move yeah. it south. So, so, yeah. But even if it were, I went by there, I don't know how many people went by there, even if it were at the very north edge, that property is just the little mini mall, right? Not the, the office um, complex that's a, Right. Um, north of it, right? Because mm -hmm. even if it's at the very north of that property, when you see it, any any view towards that barn, it's going to be in the way. And that barn is actually in really nice structure. That's the second thing on Pomeroy going west. Mm -hmm. Did anybody else go look? I go past there all the time. Um, and I, I, I had the attitude that, that if they moved it more north and that it wasn't that it might not obstruct the barn. I don't if know. You're how on top, but if you're on west, right, you can see the barn up for, on west between those two properties. Right. But but I, I I guess I guess it's hard to know exactly what where the property edge is if we're suggesting that they if they put it smack on Pomeroy. I think it would be obstructing the barn, both, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 vis visually this, this, this streetscape, but if it's, if it's sitting <laughs> back on the, on the property, I, it didn't seem to me that it would be that problematic. It's so here, here, can everyone see the screen here now? Uh, that I'm sharing the map, right? Is that, is that visible? Yeah. Yeah, so right, you know, where the mouse is now, you know, right above Valley Transporter is where they're proposing it. The recommendation was to put
push the tower north up here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jan is saying that it still could be visible as someone looks through to, you know, this is the Taylor Davis property with the barn and here's another older uh, farmhouse, but. Uh, Why this property? Is it that this owner is selling the rights to whatever company is putting up the cell tower or could it, is the cell tower picking the property? Cause they could go somewhere else then, couldn't they? They could probably go somewhere else. I think, you know, the owner, um, the owners are probably lease it, getting, you know, a lease agreement and getting a payment from the cell tower. So the owners of the property on the corner there. Yes. The mini mall. Yeah. yeah. My thought is they're getting right. They're entering into some agreement to get a payment every month or year for the cell tower. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, the, you know, if I'm not sure that there's much to do, um, they may have to go through local permitting, but sometimes cell towers with the FCC and other, you know, other regulations, it's hard to regulate a cell tower. And so mm -hmm. this, the historic piece is, is one that actually can, because it's, you know, if, uh, um, you know, if the state has, you know, the, the SHPO, the State of Historic Preservation Office, you know, Mass Historic, they can actually weigh in on if there's, if we think there's an impact. So if we think it could impact the view to the historic homes on West Pomeroy, um, I, I, you know, if it's, if it's moved north, uh, close to uh, that whole complex there, I think there's like a USDA building and other office buildings there. Uh, so here's, here, here's actually the view, you know, here's the north end of the property and here you can, you know, see the barn in the back. So the idea would be if the cell tower would be like right where this truck is going, if it was to the north. Um, but that wouldn't obstruct the barn. And the the other fact is, and I, I think it's a, a really a, a barn that's representative, but it also is surrounded all, all the time by heavy equipment. It's not it's not a pastoral scene of a barn because of the business that's housed on that. So I just kind of took all this into consideration. Sure, we're gonna take a little road trip. Can we go down West Pomeroy? No, we can't go down West Pomeroy. There's no Google Street View on West Pomeroy. No, there isn't. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, you, really could, should be. you could actually see the 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 overview. I mean, here's what you'd see. I mean, here's what Taylor Davis has right, like lined up right. along the edges all. I just don't. Yeah, I I think you know the real view of the of the barns that's meaningful on West Pomeroy is from West Pomeroy. Mm -hmm. I will say that the cell tower is supposed to be 94 feet. So, you know, this oh, is, uh, be there. Yeah. it'll be, it'll, you know, it'll be pretty tall in the background. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, I don't know what we're supposed to actually do, whether it's just recommendation, but I'm personally against it. I'd rather see it like on that proper, the next property north, way further west and north or something away from that. Although I don't know what's, what might be there. The, the golf course and the Fort River landscape then might be impacted. I don't know. Yeah, I think the, you know, you know, it might be, right. So here's the Amherst office park if we're going north. I mean, is there, would there be an opportunity to, for instance, to put it right here between the parking lots? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what their requirements are for cell tower location, but, you know, would the owner be willing to have a cell tower here? Is that what you're saying, Jan? So then it's already within these buildings. Well, yeah, it's just that any other place that's located, we're going to have to look at what else, mm -hmm. then what else it's near and what other viewpoint it affects, you know? Right. Well, what if, say, for instance, you know, you're looking up into Amherst Office Park and between these two parking lots right back here is a cell tower. And is that? You mean it's still back at the very Northwest corner of this property. Right. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, I, I, they're big, they're big structures. I still think it's going to be, right. it's going to affect the view. You know, if you're coming east on West Pomeroy and you're looking at the barn at an angle, you're going to see that thing sticking up behind it. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too protective of Bards, but that's my role on this commission. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I do think, right, I agree. I mean, at 94 feet, it is, like I'm saying, it is a tall structure. Um, I don't really know, you know, 
if the commission yeah. said that this is not a good location, I'm not sure what you know what the process is or what they will do. Oh, um, Hetty, do you have? Uh, I'm I'm just looking well, I'm looking at the map on my phone and and sort of trying to picture that intersection. I mean, isn't it a case of NIMBY really? Um, of what? Not in my backyard. Um, oh, sort of issue partly. I mean, what? It it might it would be good if it wasn't right visible from that intersections. You know, perhaps I think um, going further north would help. I'd I, rather see it visible from the intersection if all I could see were commercial buildings. Uh -huh. But you know, putting it anywhere within there, as soon as you go one one address west, you've got the, the barn and you can see the barn glimpse between buildings when you're going up West Street. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's not a city, you know, we're we're more yeah. rural than we are commercial. Yeah. Nate, what is our role with this? Because I, I'm I'm not proposing or a proponent for it there. I just have lived in South Amherst for 30 years, and I know that there was a, a tower that a property on West Bay Road um, was intended to be built, and the whole neighborhood um, did petitions and whatever else, and it was it was going to be visible from Applewood. And they ended up putting it on on the Nowatic Sport Club property, where it really isn't visible to anybody. And right so yeah. Janice making a good point. It's just very visible here. Um, and so I hadn't thought about it impacting the barn only because the barn is is a, is a, is an interesting structure, but that property is always so overrun with heavy equipment. That I never passed it thinking that I, I was ideally in the country, um, so I, you know, I, I, I could make a recommendation to um, say that it's a, you know, problematic there. I, I'm, I'm not firm in a, in a, an opinion one way or the other. Let me just, uh, just uh, hang on just a second. I just want to ask Robin if she has some um, thoughts about this. I just oh, give um, everybody a chance to a chance to weigh in. Thank you. I was was trying to look at, on the computer again from the road. Um, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm having the thought. Lots of thought. I'm having thoughts that everyone else is having. <laughs> All of them. I think the commission's role, though, is just you know it's an advisory role to the Massachusetts Historical Commission. So we you know the commission, if we'd want to send any correspondence, um, we would just you know we could do it through email. Uh, to the consultants in Mass Historic on this project. Is that who raised the question to us, Nate? Right. So Mass the, Historic? Uh, the applicant was required to send the Local Historic Commission notice of this uh, project because it triggered a, you know, a federal review or review of uh, potential impacts to historic. It's just as, you know, as part of their I think any cell tower uh, permitting has to submit something to the local preservation, the state historic preservation uh, office. And some of that is then sending it to the local historical commission asking if there's impacts. And so it's, you know, as a So we could just reply to their notification by saying that we are not thrilled with their choice of location because there is an impact, a visual impact. I mean, they'll, they'll take it or leave it, right? Right, but, right. It is kind of interesting that right behind that open area, one of the buildings is listed as a USDA rural development <laughs> institution. A <laughs> little, bit, little bit of a sort of ironic. Some, yeah. some irony there. Yeah, sure is. But Jan, I like your wording that we, we, yeah. um, are, we have some concern because we believe that there would be an impact to the neighborhood and the rural nature of local historic barns. 
because that's what the we're rural, working on. Yeah, something like the rural streetscape of West Amherst. South the West rural Amherst streetscape in, in, in the uh, uh, location of, of historic barns in the vicinity, whatever. Yeah. So Nate, can you write a letter? Do you want one of us to write a letter for you to send them? No, I can, um, Ben and I can work on it. It might just be an email. I think that's, that's fine. What? Yeah, no, Jane can fine. sign. Um, yeah, Jane, I will work. Oh, Jane, I'll work with you, and we can send something that summarizes the conversation. Okay, so now we're uh, up to public comment. There's no. I believe no there are public. no members of the public. One, you did all the updates while I was off. Yes. Yes. Okay. So. Good. Civil War tablets, um, they're looking for an, a new location, a climate control location for those. Um, okay. Nothing new on West Cemetery signs. And for the UMass campus pond, um, uh, Nate and Ben will find out whether in, the intention is to um, sort of refresh the historic landscape there or to just to replace vegetation. Okay, great. All right, then, um, so it's, well, it's just a few minutes to eight. So I, I think probably we won't get back to the um, uh, bylaw review, but we can set We up don't have any public commenting? No. There's no okay, public can comment. I bring an unanticipated item? Sure. Uh, I talked to Nate about this earlier. There's still, nobody's answering, there's nothing going on with the bids for the writer's walk signs. Um, as it, Jane, you saw my email. If we yeah. don't get these things fabricated, we're not going to get them installed before freeze again. And this is going on, what, five, six years now? I don't know what to do to get this guy, um, Delaney, to do something to respond, whatever. I tried copying um, Paul Bockelman um, apparently I wasn't supposed to do that. I did, and I didn't get a response from anybody. What do we do next? Who do I go to? Yeah, that's very frustrating. Um, I mean, would it be better to go to Dave Zomack than to Paul Bockelman? Can I just go and ask, start asking people, you know, who, who is this guy's direct supervisor? Yeah, I think, Jan, I'm sorry, when you mentioned that, maybe um, I know sometimes the, some staff don't, you know, they don't like getting emails from board or committee members. They prefer to get it from staff. So I can email Dave and Chris and Jane, I'll copy you as chair and just say that, you know, we've had numerous uh, inquiries about getting this out to bid. It's been ready for quite a while now. And um, to see if, if Anthony can, if that'll, if that'll uh, get Anthony going. Because so, you had asked, right? It's not only that he's gotten queries by email and phone from me, you have too, right? Oh yeah, no, yeah. We even had a meeting uh, a week and a half ago. There's like four projects he's working on for me. One of these, one of them is this one. And he said that it was going to be all set. Um, and I never, I haven't heard back on any of them. So. Yeah, he told me the bid thing was going out May 15th. Yeah. And it still hasn't happened. Yeah. I mean, what's the holdup? He's got so it supposedly all written. That's three months ago. Right. Yeah. The documents have been all set for a long time now. So Nate, if you email Chris and Dave, um, yeah. I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll follow up with a with a just an endorsement of your email. Okay. It's, it's great. It's the perfect COVID era outdoor cultural enrichment activity. It is. I think. Perfect. Yeah, put that in the email. We're missing an opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really, it's specific to our town and it's some of its most interesting people in the past. And I just think it would be a wonderful way to see more people socially distanced enjoying Amherst. Yeah, it, it also... It's also an example of the perfect COVID-related pretending this is affecting one's job shirking. 
of a uh, duty, you know? Uh, okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. It's like, there's no reason why this had to be held up because everybody had to work from home, but I bet that's going to be one of the excuses, you know? Yeah, it might be. I think the, um, yeah, let me send this email. Hopefully we can get that. I thought, I agree. I thought, you know, I was under the impression that bids were going to be due, you know, two months ago and we would have someone making them right now. And so there's probably been about, you know, eight to 10 phone calls, emails, maybe more uh, trying to get a status on this. And it's really hard to get, get one. And so, um, you know, you know, it's only seeking three quotes too. So it's not even like we have to put this out to a formal bid. It's just, you know, yeah. Can, yeah. It should be easy peasy. Mm -hmm. And then we should be able to immediately have it fabricated because we're totally ready. Right. I even have the new hyperlink ready. It's already up and running. Right. That's been, and that's been modified in the artwork? No, I let Seth know. We also found another mistake in the signs he called West Cemetery, Wildwood Cemetery. Oh, uh, okay. Ben and I noticed that last week, or actually Ben noticed it. And so we, um, we've been emailing Seth. So I think, uh, but other than that, we're good. I almost hesitated right. to do another review of the signs, but it was nice to have Ben take a, have a fresh look. <laughs> yeah, Ben's doing great. He did really nice uh, editing on this uh, bylaw thing. So, yeah. so let's, okay, uh, well, let's, let's stay, stay on date top of it. For next, date for our next meeting. I think we have a date. We do. What, yeah, what? I, uh, oh, I'm 26. Six, yeah. And, and is that so good? So we still think that's a good one? The August 26, is that? It, it is for me, at, you know, at this point. Mm -hmm. Jane, are you okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. Is that in the evening? We probably don't have Jane Shuffler. She probably won't be available. So we need a quorum. It's a win. Fine with me. Okay, is that, uh, 6, 6 p.m. again? 6 p.m. Yeah. We could do that. Oh, so I promise I won't be late next time. August 26th. <laughs> yeah. I'll email you again. Do, do what you can, Hetty. Sorry. All right. August 26th at 6 p.m. And then I'll work with Ben to get the bylaw going. And thanks for all the discussion on it. I think, you know, um, you know, if we go through even a few sections at each meeting, you know, the thought is after a month, we could have two months, we could have a draft that good staff could look at. And then um, we could, that it may have to be shopped around to town council and others as, um, as a zoning change. So I think there is some interesting. I have to say, after working on this like three years, this felt like the first really significant and usable discussion we've had i mean this this feels like we're really getting a good draft now you know no i i yeah i mean i think um i think just having just clear just simplifying the definitions is really huge you know that's yeah um that's a great step so uh, i have the bylaw up i think yeah next time you know as part of the agenda we can talk about the process and um the exemptions i think that would just, even getting those uh you know going through those again would be great um, yeah. Yep. I yep. think I think uh, I think we might actually pick up speed on it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. We can get excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice to have a completed version. Yeah. And now I have to study those flowcharts. I I do confess I got a little lost in them, but uh, yeah, I think you know Ben was doing that to help him understand it and. I, I, yeah, I think they're somewhat accurate, but it, you know, there is a little bit of a circular process. I'm not sure we can get away with that. I don't know if it can be a strictly linear process, but um, they yeah. all look the same until you look at the inside each box, the details. But it took me a while. I had to open it multiple times and set them against each other. Right. I think for next time, you know, my thought would be if we get through enough enough of it. I mean, if we like the two-step process, I think we should try to think of ideas or parameters for the public hearing uh, to determine preferably preserved. And so, yeah. you know, I, right. I, I don't want to have that become, 
something where if we're proposing this, you know, town council or others think the commission could just make kind of an arbitrary decision. You know, they, you know, say, oh, well, right. commissioners don't want to have a new building, so they're just going to delay it. But if we have, you know, even if it's like, even if it's like three to five points to help guide the decision, um, and Chris Kelly said he'd be happy to work on some. So if we, you know, we could even send him a draft list. Right. That'd be great. Yeah. That'd be great. Is there something in the is there something in the Massachusetts Historical Society draft that we could start with from that? They no, that's the thing. They don't have any. Okay. okay. There's nothing. Nothing. Okay. So they have, you know, standards for designation as significant. You know, they have they have nice they have things for that, but nothing to determine preferably preserved. Okay, that's weird. Yeah. Well, this has been really nice to spend a couple hours with you all this evening. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> and I look got forward to the next and the time. Have gone to bed. Should we send Should we send Jane something in San Diego? Is that Is that appropriate, or is it personal? And we should just do what we, you know. I just uh, I hadn't realized how 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 heavily pregnant she was. So. Um, when she described why she wouldn't might not be joining us tonight, I thought, oh my God, you know, this is big. <laughs> well, in that trek across the country. I know, I know, Pat. Yeah. But but I think your sentiment is on, on target heading, but maybe now is not necessarily the time, right. maybe just private wait. messages and yeah. we'll wait and see how things go. Good Hopefully idea. we'll all be excited. Yeah, and when, when she comes back, we could see what she had and then maybe give her something yeah. for the new what baby or baby. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. <laughs> so Thank you, everybody. Adjourn. So I make a motion that we adjourn. Yep. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you.